That is, I don't even know where we are, Josh, but I'm having a very nice counseling session with you. <laughs> <laughs> I have that impact on people on occasion, not as often on the podcast, but that's, uh, that's funny. Welcome to Obsessed Show, a podcast that is designed to inspire, featuring some of the most creative people in the world. I'm your host, Josh Miles. Let's talk about today's episode. Today on Obsessed Show, I'm chatting with greeting card designer and founder of the Kate Smith Company. You guessed it, Kate Smith. According to her website, Kate and her husband Ryan launched their first company from Frank together in 2012. They grew the line of 50 greeting cards into a full-fledged character brand, and we won't spoil all the details in the introduction. In 2018, they decided to expand their repertoire of fart jokes and created Kate Smith Company, making from Frank the official animal paw, if you will, of the brand. But that's not all. Kate was my very first intern candidate, and we met in my very first business, so we've got some catching up to do. So without further ado, please enjoy this conversation with Kate Smith. Okay, kids, all the way from Lafayette, Indiana, please welcome Kate Smith. Kate, welcome to Obsessed Joe. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It has been a really long time. It's been so long and I can still remember actually sitting in that interview and being like so nervous, but being like, please, Josh, hire me. (laughs) Please. (laughs) Well, it's funny because not only was that memorable to me because it was the first time that I had interviewed someone for an intern position, but the, the details of that, that interview are details that I've relayed to so many people ever since. And it was all good stuff. And I'm going to tell you now what it was because I've probably never told you about this. No, I would love to hear this. (laughs) So in this interview, a very young Kate sat across the table and started off to say, hey, I know I've got some questions for you and I'm sure you've got questions for me. Do you want me to start or do you want to start? And you like (laughs) totally took the reins of this interview from the start and proceeded to ask. And we said, oh, sure. Yeah. Ask us some questions. That's fine. And you spent probably the next 15 or 20 minutes asking us questions about what it was going to be like to be an intern working for us, which was amazing. Like this is advice that I coach so many people as you're thinking about what you want to go do. Like you've got to interview them too. And (laughs) it was hilarious. One that it was you, but also that like, that was our first interview. And we were like, is this what all the interviews are going to be like? This and is... no, other people didn't interview you. <laughs> <laughs> no, every now and then somebody would ask a few questions or, you know, I'd ask the candidate, Hey, do you have any questions? They'd be like, I don't think so. <laughs> like okay. just would come with nothing. So it's, it was <laughs> hilarious. And lots of people have probably heard me tell this story before now, but, um, and it turns out you came back after the interview and you're like, yeah, it turns out um, my fiance and I are going to stay in Lafayette and I'm going to pursue this design thing up around Purdue. So um, craziness. So that's normally I start this interview out with like, tell me about your origin story. So that was like a little bit of your pre origin story, but tell our listeners like we're going to dig into the, from Frank and we're going to talk about the greeting cards and everything, but, how did you get into design? Like, how did you find yourself in the greeting card business? Um, those are two different questions for me. <laughs> 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 but um, I mean, the long answer for design is like when I was in, I've always been artistic and like, you know, I drew like my um like my elementary school yearbook cover, I drew it, you know, like the whole, like little things growing up. I've always known I was artistic or enjoyed that. And when I was in college or not college, high school, I thought, oh, I definitely don't want to be a starving artist because I had this just like hang up in my head of like the artists were poor. And I thought, well, I'll just combine this newfangled computer thing with art and I'll be a designer. And that should, you know, at least keep me afloat. And so like, that's literally all the thought I put into it. And I guess it was a good guess, you know, Um, but that is how I got into design. And then I went to Purdue and studied visual communications design and still enjoyed it and loved it. Um, And ultimately went into advertising or at least, you know, 
tried to in the very beginning. I worked for um, Mega Brands America, which is like the ghetto Lego, if you're mm. familiar. Oh, yeah. Um, I worked for them for a little bit. And then I worked for um, Han Marketing and also Deering Group, which were the same kind of company that changed names um, locally for quite some time as well. Um, and I'll have to say that greeting cards came because Early in my career, I had an early life crisis, as I think a lot of people do. And I, you know, got into my job and I was like, oh my gosh, I actually don't like this at all. Like, I actually hate this. This is not what I signed up for. And I don't even know what I'm doing right now. And so um, I went and made a list of like anything I thought was cool. And I went and job shadowed these people. So I went to a tattoo parlor. I went to, um, let's see, an event planning studio. I went to um, a, one of those like, oh, staging, like real estate mm, stage mm-hmm. and like tried all these things. And that wasn't working. And I was doing like a lot of vision boarding <laughs> at that time. Like the whole like secret book I think was out. <laughs> <laughs> right. And um, so I had started writing these ideas in my sketchbook, just about business ideas that I thought would be cool. And I had a really fantastic boss at the time. Um, and he, I would share these with him and he goes, Hey, Kate, like that idea in your sketchbook, that's really good. And you should do it. And I tell you what, the power of one person believing in you is life changing. Mm life-changing and it was for me very much because that was kind of all I needed to be like oh really I can actually do that thing and like make what was on like that's not just a funny thing I wrote down like that could be real and that was kind of the spark I guess that lit the fire um and I decided and I guess what that idea was was from Frank and it was um spurred because my husband and I would talk for our dog Frank who's a French bulldog as I think most dog owners do Um, and we thought we were really funny, like in the kitchen, you know, just real hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) So we thought, well, maybe other people might think this is funny too. Um, and so having that background in graphic design, it seemed like a folded piece of paper would be the easiest way to go as far as a product, Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) from a manufacturing standpoint. Um, so we started with greeting cards and, um, and I, I'd always liked greeting cards anyways. And, um, it took me four years to, if I'm being brutally honest with you, of doing weekend work, uh, evening work, little focus groups, learning how to even write a greeting card, um, getting the brand together. And so it took me quite a while. And just cause I think I was scared and I wanted what I put into the world to be perfect as much as it could be. So it took me four years and we finally launched, um, at what was interior objects here in Lafayette, Indiana, which is like this really like longstanding, it's not around anymore, but was like a really longstanding cool store downtown. Um, and then quickly went to the stationary show in New York. And so I suppose the long answer, the short answer of what you've asked me is that it literally is just kind of an exercise in a believing in an idea that you had and seeing if it would work. Like, um, my boss always used to say to me, like, Kate, the worst thing that's going to happen is like, you are 80 and you have a box of greeting cards and you go, look what grandma tried one day. That's it. (laughs) You know? Um, so yeah, that's how I got into it. (laughs) You know, that's, uh, that's a version of what, um, that I was telling myself when I went out on my own, which was, Hey, I've got this really cool job working with an athletic retail company and it's people think I'm crazy that I'm going to leave to try to do it on my own. But like worst case, I'll go get another job. <laughs> like yeah. maybe have a couple examples of things that I did for a few months and nobody paid me and I went to go work somewhere else. But yeah. like, yeah, same thing. Having done my own thing, gone to work in house and then back out on my own, like the rewarding element of like chasing that entrepreneurial dream, I think is there's just nothing else like it. Are you finding that again after having all of this? Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, you know, it was nice to have three years away to like take a break from doing payroll and, you know, all of the stresses that come with running a business and HR and all those, 
all those other things. And, and to be back solo is kind of like refreshing to have my hands back in all the pieces again. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's fun for sure. That's cool. So tell us more about the early stages of from Frank. I was going to ask you where the name came from, but you've already kind of explained that, but, but what, what did it look like early on? Um, so we started in 2011 with a line of 50 greeting cards. Um, and like I said, it took me four years to get this ready. So, and I had come from a background in branding and advertising. And so I had, you know, my story and I had the like customer journey and I had like the business plan and I literally like had more than most people start with. Um, so I had the look and the aesthetic and everything in the story pretty much worked out when I started. Um, and that was about as far as I had gotten. So I started just knowing I was going to make greeting cards and they were meant to make people smile. And that was an extension of my dog who I felt was his mission was to make people smile. And they were going to look a little bit like a dog put them together. You know, they were going to have dynamo type because he can't write and they were going to be a little rough and they were going to have masking tape because obviously he's like just using what he's got. And, um, you know, just things like that. And they were going to be like him trying his best to make someone smile, but probably getting it wrong. And that was going to be funny. And so I had all of that worked out. Um, and that was about it. And I, we went to the stationary show in New York, um, which is one of like the, the largest, um, places for the industry to be. And, um, we were found by recycled paper greetings and target and, that was kind of amazing because they ended up wanting to put, they did boutique collections at the time. Um, and so they put a 12 card collection of from Frank in target stores nationwide mm, How cool! Through, through recycled paper greetings. Um, and that was like a dream come true. And it also put us in the licensing world, which we were not mm. starting out to do. Yeah. <laughs> So here we are now, like, okay, do we need to get an IP lawyer? Do we need to like just this plethora of things that you hadn't thought about? And like, oh, boutique people actually don't like it when you go put your card in a mass market store and just like Mm -hmm. the dynamics of it. So um, we actually quickly grew the brand. Um, We had a couple agents. We ended up writing a book called Don't Fart When You Snuggle. Um, We (laughs) did lottery tickets in three states. We did a whole bunch of like gift and home decor products and um, did a 35 video web series called Ask Frank, where dogs could write in and then ask him questions about like if they were having trouble making their human smile and he would like kind of like Dear Abby them. Um, And so we did a lot of things like that and it grew really quickly and eventually kind of peaked, which was interesting um, and unexpected because if you, if you know me and I, and I tell people this, like I was so in on from Frank and I thought we were all going to have a yacht and it was going to be called from Frank and we were going to ride into the sunset and I was just going to buy drinks for everyone. Like I literally, (laughs) that was like how in I was, which is good. It's like your first time doing it. And like, you don't know what you don't know. And some of that is like, it's like a bandaid because it kind of protects you from the stuff mm-hmm. you don't know. Um, and so, yeah, it peaked a little bit. We kind of um, ran with the internet sensations at the time, you know, there was mm-hmm. grumpy cat and there was boo and we didn't mean to, but we kind of did. And so there was a point where we realized, Oh, like we are going to actually have to pivot here. Um and so that is the segue, I guess, for how we've sort of started moving into Kate Smith Company now. Well, yeah. Um, for th- for those of you listeners who are not watching the YouTube version right now, you're missing out on the fact that this interview is taking place, uh, at least on Kate's end, not on my end, but <laughs> on Kate's end in their RV. Um, when did that become part of the brand, the business or, or your lifestyle? 
Um, so we just hit three years in May living full time in our Airstream, which means traveling, working and living full time in 180 square feet. Um, and that happened. It was, it's interesting. Okay. All of these kind of culminate. So from Frank had peaked. Mm-hmm. Now let's all remember that my yacht was not docked anywhere. <laughs> And <laughs> you're missing sunsets all over the world. <laughs> yes. And so I was a little bit like lost and mourning the what I considered a failure of that. Mm. It was not a failure by any stretch of the imagination. And I can say that now, but for many years I couldn't. Um, and so there was a couple years where I just really floundered, to be honest with you. And I would make art, but I had no clue what I was doing. And I kind of thought I it wasn't good enough and it wasn't worthy enough because I had had my moment and, and that didn't work out. And that was proof that I couldn't, that it wasn't good enough, you know, Mm -hmm. like that was it. And, um, so I was having, I had probably a rough couple of years, which seems like a really long time to have for a rough period, (laughs) but I guess they kind of last that long sometimes. Yeah. Right. Um, and so my husband, he, uh, you know, was kind of going along a similar path where he wasn't liking what he was doing. Um, and both of us just kind of felt like, ugh, like kind of itchy, just like, like, this is what it is. You know, like we were part of a country club. We lived in a really nice house. We had, you know, res- done great in our fields respectively. And it just felt like, but really this is it. Like, this is what life is. I don't know. It just felt like not, it felt like not enough potentially, um, or just that there was more out there and we were not even scratching the surface. Um, and so I came up with the idea of what if we lived in an airstream and traveled around, because as I was doing some soul searching, I realized that like on my deathbed, if I haven't traveled the world and seen the world, shame on me. Like it will be one of my biggest regrets in life. Mm -hmm. And I just, I'm not prepared to stomach that. Um, now we don't have oodles and oodles of dollars. So how can we just start now? Cause the world Mm -hmm. is, there's a ton to see. And so what if we just made traveling our life and what if on the weekends, every place was new and you got to kind of chip away at seeing the world. Um, and I pitched it to him, my husband, Ryan, and he was in like pretty quickly. Mm. Um, and So that whole transition took us about two years, another ship to turn, but, um, we sold our, our house in the nice neighborhood, bought a smaller house that we thought we could rent, remodeled that sold 99.2% of everything that we (laughs) own. Um, and then also worked to transition, uh, my business to something that could be mobile which meant no more manufacturing and distribution and going all in on licensing and, and anything that could be mobile. So I think we tried some drop shipping. We tried, (laughs) we tried a few things. Um, and so, yeah, we made that transition and kind of just as an effort to be like, I don't know, what are we waiting for? And life is short and you just, you don't, you're not guaranteed anything. Um, And so he quit his job, which was a little terrifying because at the time he was the breadwinner Mm -hmm. and we kind of banked that we would just make it work. And it's like one of those exercises in betting on yourself. And, um, so far it's been a pretty good bet. (laughs) (laughs) So maybe that's a good transition to talk about how you know, the Kate Smith company piece of it kind of took over from, from Frank. Yeah. Um, so we re- after my floundering, um, I realized that I, I wanted to make humans smile. I was not off track on that. Like that is my passion. And I actually think greeting cards are a fantastic vehicle for that. I mean, it's the simple folded piece of paper that people keep in their, the top drawer of their dresser for years. And it's magic to me. And so I wasn't far off on a couple things. And what I wanted was a platform that, you know, 
I could do this for the next 50 to 60 years if I wanted to, and I could pivot and I could try different things and I could have multiple brands and um, anything that seemed amazing I could try. And that wouldn't be like off brand, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I guess I just wanted a platform that had a little more longevity and allowed me to avoid as much as you can a peak or something in your business that makes you have to totally reinvent the wheel. So, um, so we decided to originally name it after myself because I have a very original name. Nobody (laughs) else has that. So, um, (laughs) so, I mean, the good news is Kate Smith's around the country are probably like, this is, this is my thing. (laughs) That's actually only my following just people named Kate. (laughs) <laughs> That's a pretty good audience right there. There's so much of us that I don't have to market to anybody else. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we switched it. And thankfully, so I had been working with Recycled Paper Greetings and they had been such champions of me as an artist that even when I did From Frank, they were like, hey, do you have any other stuff that you want to show us? And I was like, mm. I don't know if I do. <laughs> do you really want me to try something else? Like, I thought that's what you liked was the dog fart stuff. Um, (laughs) And so they were really like cheering me on and kind of supporting me and like, yeah, try some more stuff. And I was like, okay. So quietly um, during those two years that I was floundering, I would submit new things and I didn't have a brand. I didn't have a company and I would put it just blank. There was no branding Mm. on the back of the card because I didn't want to tie it to from Frank. And I even had an end cap, which is like the big kahuna in the greeting yeah. card world where you get like 18 on the end with no name on it because I didn't have any branding and I wasn't actually like supposed to be doing anything. So I had this big moment that was blank. <laughs> <laughs> and so, the girl who came up through branding. <laughs> right? I know, right? This is what happens when you start to like get let stuff creep into your brain. You just, oh, yeah. just like... It's danger, you know? Um, but so I I had kind of like gotten to practice um, and get paid to practice writing these greeting cards and kind of cutting my teeth on what makes a good one and, and new art styles and things like that. And so um, when it came time to kind of draw a line in the sand and go, okay, like this is what we're going to call it. This is what we're going to do. I still wasn't ready to be Mm -hmm. honest with you, I wanted my four years, like, you know, I needed four years to build it. And my husband would be like, Hey, you are going to have to let people see you do this out loud. You Mm -hmm. are going to have, you cannot hide from this and people are going to see the mess. And I know you're not going to like that. And I don't, (laughs) but you have to, if you want to get anywhere, like there wasn't that four years, I didn't have that luxury anymore. Um, so Yeah. So we just started, we switched the website, we switched the Instagram account, we switched all the things and we just one day became Kate Smith company Mm -hmm. and, um, started putting out our own things and have honestly kind of developed into what we are today out loud and in front of people. And I still feel like we are, if I'm being honest with you, um, and I think I, I think that's okay. I'm slowly learning that that's okay. <laughs> yeah, Thank the secret is we're all just making this up. <laughs> Nobody knows what they're doing. <laughs> no, no, and that's it's so true. And the funny thing is that like when I used to go to trade shows, I would walk around, and I literally would be like, Ryan, you me in the booth, and I'm gonna go walk around and find people that I admire. And I'm gonna ask them. I'm gonna I'm gonna find the secret to like how they're doing this. And I would walk around and literally try to like find answers of like, how are you so successful? Like, what are you doing right? And I thought there was some like secret sauce and there's not. There's tips and tricks, but nobody has your answers for you. And unfortunately you have your answers and it's just Mm -hmm. through like Mm -hmm. some some trust and some self-work and some confidence and some like betting on yourself that I think the answers come and through doing. Um, so yeah, that is, I don't even know where we are, Josh, but I'm having a very nice counseling session with you. (laughs) (laughs) I have that impact on people on occasion, not as often on the podcast, but that's, uh, that's funny. I was talking to, um, 
a colleague of mine who's out on the West coast. And he was like, I, Josh, I don't know what to do. What do you recommend? And I was like, you know, my gut says your gut knows the answer. Yeah. You put that on a greeting card. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Josh smiles. <laughs> Just leave the back blank. Cause I don't, I don't want the attention. <laughs> it be a great brand. It worked well for me. <laughs> That's right. It's a very popular brand. Yes. Um, what was COVID like for you guys? I mean, so many companies were challenged and I can imagine there were probably ups and downs related to it. You guys are already like, you know, in the airstream, you've already, you've just redone the business and then all this craziness hits. Well, well how did that impact you guys? Um, so not as much as, as other people, I think, um, we were already a little self quarantined. And <laughs> as it turns it, out, <laughs> as it turns out, yeah. Um, and we are usually places where we don't know that many people, so it's not like we were going to gatherings. And um, so, from that standpoint, we were kind of like already prepared, we already had the bomb shelter that everybody else wanted. Um, <laughs> and then, from a business standpoint, I mean, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't didn't have a moment of like, oh, shit, like, how is this gonna pan out? Um, yeah. And to be honest, if we would have had all boutique stores, I think we would have been really in a hard place. Um, But what saved us is being in the mass market and having stores that stayed open, they were essential with grocery. And um, that helped us a lot. And then also greeting cards, I think became ever more, um, it just became proof of how important they are because they could get into hospitals, they could get into Mm. retirement homes and they could get places where humans couldn't. And so my opinion, greeting cards had a day during COVID. Um, And I really hope that that continues because they're magic in my opinion. Mm. And um, so we did, we did okay. Um, And I almost feel bad saying that because I know there's just so many people that didn't do okay, but we were lucky. (laughs) Well, on the heels of that, I know you mentioned target was part of your story early on targets is part of your story. Again. Um, tell us a little bit about what's happening with target. Yeah, they are. Um, so we last summer had a collection that, um, launched in target. It's an 18 card collection of, we like to call it paper hugs and high fives and it's cards meant for the crappy Tuesday, the impromptu celebration, um, the just because I was thinking of you and they are weirdly enough cards that are not seen that often in the mass market. Um, usually you go down that aisle and it's, birthday and father's day and every occasion, but like, where's the crappy Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Um, and so we had that collection launch actually in the middle of COVID (laughs) last summer and it did so well. And I think it's because people were just craving human connection and they were craving love and they were craving little pieces of joy. And that is, what those folded piece of papers did for them and they could send it to their grandma that they couldn't, you know, hug at the moment and they could send it to all these people they couldn't touch. And so it did really well. And, um, we're lucky enough to have another in cap, which is the, the end of the aisle for anybody that's not into the retail terms, but, um, we're lucky enough to have another collection with them currently right now that just launched on Monday And it is kind of a encore of what we did last summer. Um, We brought back the best hits and then we brought in some new refreshes. And they are, again, just cards meant to like stock up on and keep um, in your desk drawer and send them when, just when you want to make a human smile because it makes, I don't know about other people, but it makes me feel like a million bucks to make someone's day. And if I can do it in a tiny little way, often I just feel better about things. And so, um, we've also got a couple little cards in there that are super fun. They're target related cards. Um, so there's one that's like life advice from a a shopping cart. And then (laughs) there's another one that's got another target theme to it too. And because the cards are just for any time we can do stuff like that. Um, and the target lovers out there like myself had really been into those. Um, gotten a lot of love from the target blogs recently and things like that. So 
So yeah, we're enjoying being there and we're enjoying um, what I would like to think is kind of not reinventing the greeting card, but I think it's definitely a sentiment that that needs more, needs more of that in the market is, um, you know, we communicate on social media much differently than we do with greeting cards. And what I tried to do with these collections is take my inspiration from how people are really communicating um, in real life and on social media. And what I found is, is that, you know, people are going, Hey, are you doing okay? Like, or Hey, like, here's a funny picture of me or here, like just these tiny little things of like checking in. Mm -hmm. And that is what I tried to do with these greeting cards that I feel like, um, and I think that's why they're hitting so well, or at least I hope they are. (laughs) That's cool. It's, you know, it's, it's touching to hear you describe kind of the, the heart behind the cards. So like I intended to kind of wrap up this part by telling you congratulations and high five, but it's like kind of made me a little emotional just talking oh. about all the cards. Like that's, that's super cool. Thank um, you. Maybe we will uh, have a, a, a clever shift in topic here so that I can get out of my, my emotional moment here. You need to cry, um, Josh. <laughs> I need, okay. I need, we're just going to hit pause <laughs> on zoom for a second. Cause I'm a little weepy. Uh, <laughs> oh, geez. That's I'll good fun. Yeah. Now, now I'm in therapy. Um, <laughs> you've, you've implied this, but tell us about the team that is the Kate <laughs> Smith company. Like who's involved? Um, well, we have a giant team of two people and a dog. Um, so my husband and I work on the business full time together, which I, I love, honestly, I think a lot of people look at me and go, how can you work with your spouse? Like, I don't think so, but, um, I would really have it no other way. Um, and he does, so he, our official titles, because we're kind of people that like to do that. Like he is the CEO. So he like literally runs it, um, Mm -hmm. you know, makes things function, does accounting, does contracts, does numbers, does, um, shipping, anything that I think is not very fun. (laughs) (laughs) He does. (laughs) Thankfully he thinks it's kind of fun. He's in charge of the no fun department. No fun. Yeah. Um, and I get to do the creative, um, which involves actually making and writing the product, um, the marketing, the branding, the kind of big vision view for the company. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what I handle. And we sort of go back and forth and it's not always even, you know, I think sometimes we could use one and a half of me. Um, and then sometimes you know, it's never, it's never always perfectly even, but, but yeah, so we run it together and we have Frank who is just retired at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Living the good life. Yeah, He's he waiting is. for his yacht. Yeah, he is. <laughs> so what's your workflow for creating the cards? Like as far as design goes, are you like straight in the computer for everything? Or are you hand sketching stuff? Like for those of us who are like, want to get nerdy into the creative production side. Well, so the, they do have a cool story. So the, um, when we started on the traveling, I became obsessed with taking pictures of letters that I would see. So we, we go to a lot of small towns and I love nothing more than a good hand painted sign. Mm. And when I say that, I do not mean that it is perfect. I mean that like, Jim Bob from Apalachicola, Florida made this sign and he ran out of F. So he just chopped the last leg off the E and he ran out of W. So he just flipped the M and like that works. You know what I mean? Like I geek out with that stuff because it's just got this human element to it that I feel like it's, it's hard to recreate. And so I just started taking these pictures of, of these letters around the country and I had no clue what I was going to do with them. Um, but I just like felt compelled to do it. And, um, what I ended up doing was actually taking bits and pieces from these letters around the country and making my own fonts out of them. Mm. Um, and so the fonts on the greeting cards are made from these fonts and pictures that I've created from around the country. Um, and then I guess my process, when I start the cards, I am all digital, So we live in an Airstream and my studio literally fits in my backpack and 
it has to fit there. It has to get packed back up there. And so like, I don't have the luxury of paper or anything fun like that. So I work totally on an iPad um, and a laptop and it actually works perfectly fine. Um, yeah. Are you asking me the digital process or the whole creative process? Yeah. I mean, anything else that you want to <laughs> share with us is fine. Um, so yeah, that is, I guess from a technical standpoint, that's how, how it gets done is I start, um, with a sketch on the iPad. I usually start with writing and research, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. A lot of where I start doesn't, it's not even art. It's mostly just me gathering words and ideas and and things, gifts and weird things. And then yeah. that's where comes from there. Um, and then I write and sketch and final art. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm curious since you went from kind of the brand and advertising world into greeting cards. So like were some of your early design influences influences that you're still paying attention to now or those early influences more like on the branding front or like on the greeting card side or who, who are you, um, who have you paid attention to or inspired by? Um, so I actually don't have like a lot of, I did when I was in college, I had like, you know, the, the typical ones, you know, where you're like, um, you love like all the people that are in your textbooks, but, um, I don't actually have a ton of like traditional design inspirations. I find it so much more interesting, more interesting to pull from different industries. Mm. So like, um, I actually find a ton of inspiration in comedians and musicians because I think that they're doing out loud what all artists have to do, which is get up on stage, try it out, fail, tweak it and try it again Mm. over and over and over and over in front of people. And, um, I think that they're, and that's part of it. And like, they expect that and they're comfortable with it. And I think a lot of times artists are not, you know, like from my experience, you know, I got up there on my soapbox, said what I had to say and was embarrassed that it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. Like, like shut up and get back on stage, you know? Um, so I think I find a ton of inspiration in watching them work out their things in front of people. And I also find a lot of inspiration in musicians because not every album has to look the same. And that is how I made myself okay with being able to do Net Com- Kate Smith company now as it is my sophomore album. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> like, thank you, Taylor Swift. Uh, it is it's okay that they look different because artists change. And, um, and to me, I just feel like those are some, some industries that we could, I I really draw from because they give me a lot of comfort. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what's the future look like for the Kate Smith company? Like what's, are there dream projects or collaborations or licensing things? Sounds like you've done so many things already. Like, What's, what's left to figure out? Oh, geez. Everything is left to figure out. Josh. <laughs> Everything is left. Um, I think what I'm really excited that we're doing right now is I feel like we are stepping into our own. Um, and I feel like we're getting ready to kind of lead the charge and who we want to be and what we want to put into the world. And what we're working on launching is a digital shop. Um, where we'll start producing content on how to make a human smile like every other week. And some of that will have digital download components where you can just go and I'll provide you with a few pieces. And then here's just easy tools for you. Anytime that you like, are like, Oh God, Josh had a bad day. Let me just download this thing and make him a cute little thing. And boom. Um, And like, I, I often ask myself or I have, heard somebody else ask like this and took it from them but like what do you want to exist in the world like what do you wish was there that isn't and then you should just make that and so this digital store is my answer to that question um like I just wanted a place to go where you could it's just all about making people happy and it's like a resource and it's a great place to pick yourself up it's a great place to pick other people up and so um we're going to be starting this later in the year And then 
I'm super stoked because we work with some really fantastic people. And I've had the luxury of learning from my last go around of things that I would like to do the same and things that I would like to do differently. And I feel like a couple of the things that we're doing better this time is that we're just being really thoughtful with who we work with and really thoughtful with what we put into the world and not, not every project's going to be a good fit. Most probably aren't, um, you know, and I just want to be intentional. Um, I think a lot of times that when a lot of chefs get in the kitchen and, and in licensing, you get licensees, you get agents, mm-hmm. you get retailers, and you get a lot of people that have an opinion about what you should put into the world. And it's easy to not hear yourself anymore. And so um, I think that that's what I'm hoping the future looks like for us is that we're going to be able to um, continue to make humans smile in the way that we want to. And that feels really authentic to us. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so this is a question that I ask everybody who's ever been on the show, um, as designers, as creatives, I find that we're an obsessive lot. There's a lot of things we get excited about. Um, what do you find that you are most obsessed with right now? So it's going to be a little bit of a springboard off what I just talked about. I have found that I am kind of obsessed with finding like boiling down the smallest ways to make another human happy. And so let me give you a couple examples. So my family, my brother, my dad, and I, and my sister-in-law, we communicate through puffy face photos. So the listeners aren't able to see this, but you basically like blow your cheeks up like, like this and you cross your eyes if that's your flavor and you do whatever, but you look ridiculous. <laughs> um, and this is essentially our way of saying, hey, how are you? How's your day? I'm thinking of you. And it's required that you send me a puppy face back. So it's a tiny little thing like that. And I'm like, how is this dumb act? How can I like bottle this and give Mm. this to people? Um, Or like, for example, I work with a really fantastic counselor and we've done these kind of exercises where um, exercises and not caring what people think about you. And one of them, he had me take balloons as I shopped through the grocery. So you go to like the floral section first and you grab this giant thing of balloons and then you do your grocery shopping with them. And it is utterly ridiculous. And you'll hit people in produce with your balloons and people will be like, why aren't you just going to get that after you check out? And (laughs) you're like, exactly. (laughs) But what I realized in doing this exercise is that a lot of people thought it was funny and like it made them smile. And so just like, just, I'm kind of obsessed with just boiling it down to like, what is the the least common denominator? Like the smallest factor, um, even down to like a greeting, Mm -hmm. like I can greet you in a way that's just like monotone or I can greet you like a dog where I'm like, Oh my gosh, Josh, I have not seen you for so long. And you're like my favorite person in the world. And Holy crap. I'm so happy to see you. And that feels like a million times better. Yeah, it does. Um, and so there's just these tiny, tiny little things and it geeks me out how simple they can be. And it geeks me out how tiny things can have such a big impact on people. And that's what I'm trying to like bottle. (laughs) That's super cool. I I can totally see as you were talking to all the parallels between the way you think about greeting cards and stand up comedy. Like there's yeah. so much overlap there. Um, I took a a class in stand up comedy like right before the pandemic started, and the last class you had to get up and like do your routine like in front of a live audience of a couple hundred people, and like as much as it was terrifying, it was awesome too. So I I highly yeah. recommend it. Either you for you or city? for our listeners. That- yeah. It was uh it was in Carmel, actually in, near near Indianapolis. So Oh my was, gosh, I love that. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Um, and you know, I think for anybody who's in the creative space to to work a creative muscle in a way that they haven't worked before, like mm-hmm. designers taking a stand-up class or doing improv or something like that. I think it's it's so helpful to just use your mind in a different in a different way. 
Oh my gosh, I so agree. And I think it opens things up that you didn't expect as well. Like little portals get opened up of like, oh, hey, Josh, you didn't know this was over here, but here you go. Here's like the good karma of creativity. Like they just open up. And I think impromptu and improv is like a life skill. I feel like they should teach that in like high school. Oh yeah. That's like <laughs> life, man. <laughs> to be able to walk into a room or be in a conversation and be relaxed and make a joke. And, you know, it just, it's kind of like you said, with the, with the greeting, like a dog, like, yeah. the, Hey, how are you? It's so great to see you like that. That is so much more impactful to somebody than, mm-hmm. or, or like being in a conversation where you can be light and be funny in the right moment. And, um, you know, it's just so much more memorable. Yeah. Or even giving a good hug. Do you think that you give a proper hug, Josh? Let's talk about this. Yes. Okay. I think my hugs are on point. You got to get your ass in. You cannot get your, you cannot have the ass out. I used to like, have you ever seen people do hugs like this? (laughs) Yes. Where they're like, you're like, you can tell you don't want to hug them. Yes. Um, You got to get in there and you got to squeeze and you got to hold it for at least a couple of seconds. And I'm a big fan of hugging. So if you're not a hugger, don't come and hug me. (laughs) It will take a couple of seconds. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if I have a couple seconds to give you for this. Yeah. <laughs> I think handshakes and hugs are the same way though. Like you have to be like in the moment, like responding to how the other person is bringing it. So if somebody yeah. is like a super aggressive handshaker, you can't give them the limp fish and vice versa. Like, yeah. you know, you can't be all aggressive when they're like, I don't know if I'm ready for a handshake yet. Or, you know, <laughs> you just kind of like kind of play it by ear. That's true. Or you could just hug them. <laughs> <laughs> just, just lay it on them. <laughs> You're getting a hug. Yeah, buddy. I would recommend that. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, maybe, maybe hugs is going to be part of your your answer here. But um, do you have any favorite piece of advice that you've received, or like your favorite piece of advice to pass along to other people? Um, so I think that the something that I've learned and I'm currently learning and continue to learn is that you actually know more than you think you do. Um, I've so often found myself looking for others to have answers for me. And that includes my peers, that includes my agents, that includes my husband and none of them do. They have advice that might be educated or timely, but they don't have my answer. And that is because it does not come from other people. It comes from you. Um, And I think the best way to kind of start hearing yourself is I find journaling and, and it could be different for other people. It could be meditation. It could be whatever, but I mean, just tune into your voice and trust it. Cause I think that you are, you're wildly smarter than you think you are and you know more and you are more capable than you think you are. That's awesome. Love it. All right, Kate, before we head out, any, um, any encouragements or asks of our listeners, anything you want to challenge them to? Well, yeah, I do. I would love to challenge them to find some tiny way today to make someone happy and then just take note of how that makes you feel. So I'm betting you it's going to feel great, even if it's a tiny little thing. And I'm I think that the more that we can incorporate that into every day, it's like this little vicious circle and it's my way of making the world a better place and it's easy. And it's like with what we have. And so, I mean, just do something, like greet someone, greet someone like a dog today. That is my (laughs) challenge for you. Um, (laughs) I guarantee it feels like a million bucks. Nobody hates that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah try it out. Give it a try. All right, Kate, tell our listeners where they can learn more about the Kate Smith company and, uh, you know, which giant retail, uh, house can they find more of your greeting cards? (laughs) In case we haven't dropped enough hints there. I know. Right. Um, so katesmithcompany.com is our website and Kate Smith company, um, is where we are on Instagram. And then we do have like a small, um, offering online at all times, just because we always need to have something for you. But currently we do have an 18 card collection at Target. If you haven't heard me mention this 10 times today, we're very proud of it. We think that you will love it. 
least we hope that you do. Um, and so it'll be there for a limited time. So if there's one that you like, I would stock up. But yeah, that's where we are right now. <laughs> awesome. Well, Kate, it was a pleasure to catch up with you again. Yeah, you as well. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being on the show and thank you for being obsessed with design. Okay, kids, that's episode 162 in the books. For all of today's show notes, head over to obsessedshow.com. And if you haven't already while you're there, add your email address to our newsletter. I'll update you on some of my favorite new episodes and some cool things I find in my daily obsessions. Of course, all the links are over at obsessedshow.com to all the places you can find this show, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Spotify. So no matter where you find your podcasts, chances are you can listen to Obsessed Show from there. Just head over to obsessedshow.com. The Obsessed Show is produced by yours truly, Josh Miles. To have me speak or MC at your next event, head over to joshmiles.com to learn more. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.